On day one, I was a small firefly, hurrying my way through the dark, muddy swamp. Ah, finally back home. Bozo, what are you doing? Turn off your light now, before they find us. Wait, who finds us? Just then, deadly frogs leapt through the tree line all around us and began attacking my people. Everyone was trying to fly away in panic. But the frogs were able to use their tongues and devour each and every one of us whole. <laughs> These swamp frogs have finally found more of you insects. <laughs> Eat them, boys. Eat them all. From just the toad's presence, my home began to be infested by a vile, poisonous fungus. Bozo, you have broken the Firefly's number one rule to never shine our light, and this is why! No, I'm sorry. I can fix this. Ah! You've done enough. All of this is your fault. We were interrupted by one of the frogs landing right in front of us. Everyone who's still alive, escape! On day two, a small group of us fireflies were trying to escape from the frogs. But as we were flying down the river, their tongues began darting out from the bushes. My people were being taken out one by one. Oh no! We all had to navigate through the tongues until barely reaching the trunk of a tree. Oh no, we're still not alone. Thank goodness you guys are all right. Ah! This is all your fault. You know we are never supposed to use our firelight. No wonder everybody thinks you're weak and delusional. We're going to look for other survivors. Look, I didn't mean for this to happen. I quickly tried to follow them out, but as I left the trunk, they were already gone. A nearby campsite, though, caught my eye. Maybe they went there. On day three, I wandered near the campsite as a human ran by excitedly. Oh boy, I got another one. Another what? I looked and saw that they were collecting different types of insects. Oh no. Guys, where did you go? This isn't funny. I passed a very large campfire and made my way towards the collection of jars. And thankfully, they hid me away from the huge humans. I turned to see an ant captured in one of the jars. Huh? Hey, have you seen any fireflies around here? What? No, I'm just surprised to see one with its light on. It's been decades. Wait, really? Do you know why we stopped using our light? As I said this, one of the humans came walking by. I barely ducked behind the ant jar in time. Whoa! Hmm, I must be seeing things. Too close. All right, listen up. You break me out of this jar and get me to that picnic with that sweet, sweet pumpkin pie. I'll tell you everything I know about you fireflies. Okay, deal. I flew up to try and open the jar, but instead I clumsily knocked it over, breaking it. That's one way to do it. Because of the noise, the humans turned and spotted us. A firefly? Hurry up and get me a jar. The humans chased me around the camp with jars in hand. Ah! Stay away from me! I was doing everything I could to avoid them. Stop it! Why are you doing this? Is he talking to us? I don't know, man. Just catch the thing. And I just need to find the rest of my people. But they didn't listen and swatted me right towards the campfire. Ah! ah! Because of its fire, I suddenly grew much stronger. What the... Huh? One of the humans charged at me with another jar, but I shot out a fireball? Ah, hot, hot, hot! They frantically ran around the camp, and when they touched their tent, it caused it to catch on fire. Ah! Firefly is evil! Run! Uh, sorry. I turned to see the ant from before was on the picnic table, eating pumpkin pie. Ah, delicious. Okay, pal, this is the most beautiful food I've ever eaten. Yeah, yeah, good for you. Now, about the fireflies. Why did we stop using our fire? Right, come on, follow me. On day five, I followed the ant down a spooky path in the swamp where I heard, there 
there are frogs here? Just stay low. We're here. We walked out to a large lake with an eerie green glow. Are you sure this is safe? You wanted to know about fireflies, right? Look around. Those horrible frogs are what happened. Years ago, this entire swamp was pure beauty, especially the lake. But one day, those dirty, wart-filled frogs came in, and they brought their poisonous filth with them. They also ate every insect in sight. And with our light, I'm guessing that made us the easiest targets. But why not stand and fight back against them? Why are you asking me? You fireflies are the ones who are supposed to maintain the balance here to begin with. Wait, we were? Just then, a powerful explosion erupted in between us. Ah! Wait, is this honey? Yes! Ah! More ribbits began to echo in the nearby trees. We need to find a safe place to hide, and fast. On day six, we were making our way through the vile swamp. Come on, there has to be a safe place around here. To make things easier, we got onto a lily pad to go down the nearest river. Uh, do you hear that? It sounds like... I looked up, and it was bringing us right towards a waterfall! No, no, no! Ah! We crashed down, and thankfully, we're unharmed. Wait, what is this place? I saw a hidden terrain in the swamp. It's so beautiful. This must have been what the swamp was like before the frogs. With that, I quickly got to work, building up a home for myself. I used a jar from the human camp. I don't know where the other fireflies went. But I have to find them and show them that we can't live in fear. If they won't stand up against those frogs, then I will. After finalizing my home, I noticed that the ant had built himself his own personal anthill. And is that the honey? Of course. Food is food, dude. Can't let it go to waste. By the way, my name's Crum. Nice to meet you, Crum. Suddenly, another huge pile of honey splatted down onto us. Ugh! Gross! Oh, sweet nectar. Okay, seriously? Where is this stuff coming from? On day seven, I followed a trail of honey left on the ground until reaching a flower forest. And there was a strange scientist bee. Ah, this stupid test. Why did it have to fail? Why? Hey, are you the one causing those honey explosions? Ah! Oh, it's just a little fly. A firefly. Yeah, whatever. So, the honey's shooting out that far, is it? That's not good. He is not going to be happy. Who's he? Just then, I heard a loud roar coming from nearby. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, would you just shut it? We looked out to see a gigantic bear closing in, sniffing the air. I had an idea and shot out one of my fireballs out in the distance. Because of this, the bear turned towards it and ran off. Whoa, you have actual fire powers? Oh my goodness, this could be it. Wait, what could be? You, follow me now. On day eight, the bee led me to his hive town, nestled in the forest. Okay, look, that bear we saw, he comes here every single week, demanding for our honey and destroying everything. So, we were testing some experiments to expand ours, to fend him off and keep some for ourselves. And I guess something went wrong. Yeah. That went wrong. He pointed to the far side of the town, and there loomed a honeycomb volcano. It suddenly erupted with more globs of honey, slamming into a bee. Ah! He brought me to the volcano's entrance, and as we approached... Hot! Oh, too hot! Uh, ignore him. <laughs> Here's the deal. We used a special fire flower for this experiment. It's too hot for us to handle. But you 
on the other hand. Wait, you want me to retrieve it? Fine, only because it's destroying my home. On days nine to 10, I headed inside the honeycomb volcano where I was quickly met with blasts of burning honey. Ah, okay, stay calm. Looking around the area, I saw that the fire flower had completely overtaken the volcano. Testing, testing, okay. What you're looking for is in the core room, the deepest part of the volcano. And you must hurry. This entire thing is gonna blow soon. No pressure. I hurried through all the different rooms, passing by a nectar beach and a library. These are just so weird. I heard that. But as I was leaving, I saw a book titled fire flower one of the eternal flames eternal flames what are those another quake shook the entire volcano as i reached the final hallway leading to the core room it was broken up and hot honey poured from above and it was about to seal off the room no come on i quickly navigated through the hot honey and flew under the last drop just in time ha i did it Finally, I made it into the volcano's core room, but there, the large fire flower was waiting for me, and it surprisingly looked very upset. On days 11 to 12, the enraged fire flower began to unleash its hot honey attacks all throughout the room. Ah! How do I even stop this thing? I looked out and spotted three different levers all around. On it! I dashed towards the first one and flipped it, causing the mouth of the volcano to begin to close. That's it! If I close that, then the flower can't shoot out its honey. As soon as I said this, an explosion of nectar hit me back, almost knocking me into a pool of hot honey. Whoa! Spotting the second lever, I unleash a fireball, flipping it too. One more to go. But the fire flower seemed to sense what I was doing and summoned other fire plant creatures to its defense. Oh no! I flew over them as they reached out to strike, making it to the final lever just in time! Ha! I did it! The volcano was fully closed off, and without any sunlight, the creatures withered away. Aw, look at the fire flower! It's all small and cute now. I went up and collected it for the bees, but as I did, its fire caused me to grow even stronger. I gained five more hearts and grew out my very own fire wings that allowed me to rain down a flame barrage attack. Whoa, why does this keep happening? But then the volcano quaked again. And this time it was caused by the giant bear clawing it open. My honey. Oh no, time to get out of here. On days 13 to 14, I escaped the volcano. That stupid bear. All he cares about is honey this, honey that. He wouldn't know a good experiment if it stuck him in the face. Okay, calm down. Look, I'm sorry, but we kind of have to leave now before he sees us. The remaining scientists and I fled to another area of the flower forest. Ah, your wings. That fire flower must have empowered you. Just as I expected in my hypothesis. You gotta love those eternal flames. The eternal flames? What is that? They are very rare objects. The wispy campfire, the fire flower, the never-ending torch, the burning flashlight, and the ignited lily pad. If my research is correct, they are meant to bring light to the swamps and aid the fireflies. That's it. If I find them all, maybe I can grow strong enough to fend off those swamp frogs and take back the swamp for our people. Come on, I know a better place for you all to stay. On days 15 to 16, I brought the bee scientists back to my home. Together, we built them a new beehive high up in the tree. And because of this, they began to work on a new honey laboratory in the base. Hey, thanks for that. 
We'll take it from here. All right. Just no more volcanoes, okay? Yeah, yeah, whatever, pal. Look, if you ever need anything, just call for me. The name's Buzz. Glad you're willing to help, Buzz. Suddenly, I heard Crumb yelling out, and he was frantically hopping around the base. What's the deal, man? There you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. I was out searching for, well, food, but I saw more of your kind. Other fireflies? Yeah, but you're not gonna like where they are. On day 17 to 18, Crumb led me to the nastiest part of the swamp I had ever seen. It was covered with poisonous fungus and warts everywhere. And crawling within it were swamp frogs. You're taking us here? Do you want us to die? Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to be a good friend and help you find your people. Yeah, right. Sorry, just show me where you saw them. I followed him as we stealthily passed by the wandering swamp frogs and reached the heart of their territory. Their poisonous goop was spreading all around, encasing countless other insects. And sitting on his lily pad throne was the large swamp toad. Look around. We've never been stronger. This swamp is ours. As our filth spreads, all its creatures will have nowhere to hide. They'll only serve to fill our stomachs. I looked over and saw in a separate pile were my firefly people. Oh my goodness. You guys are okay. Uh, so what are you doing here? I quietly burned away some of the goop freeing some of my people, getting you guys out. Now, come on. Gah, you're still using your light. Look where that got us. Not now. We'll talk about this later. As I was bringing everyone back the way we came, a frog was now hopping down it. Great. We need to find another exit. Everyone was too weak to fly. So I looked around and spotted that there were lily pads making a path across the lake. We have to do this fast. Let's go. They began jumping from pad to pad as I stayed close behind, making sure everyone got out safe until... Oh no! Run! It shot its tongue at one of the fireflies, but Crumb managed to push them to safety. I unleashed my flame barrage attack at them, which hit him directly in his eye. Whoa. How did you do that? With that, we used the opportunity to run from the frog swamp. The fireflies escaped! Ha! On days 22 to 26, we safely made it out of the swamps with all of my people. Seriously, whoa, how did you do that? It's a long story. I'm just glad you're safe. Don't think this changes anything. We were in that mess because of you. Look, I'm just trying to do what I can to get rid of those frogs so that we can live freely again. Those frogs, they cannot be beaten. It's a death wish. Well, when I find all the eternal flames, we'll see about that. Uh, did you say eternal flame? I've heard of one of those. Wait, you have? He led Crumb and I off as the rest of the fireflies followed the king back to my base. It's supposedly deep inside this scary forgotten temple. So be ready. But as we approached the top of the hill, I looked out and saw a fast food place? Oh, score! Oh, yeah, uh, I forgot. The temple used to be here, but humans built this over it. You just need to get into the basement. Okay, got it. On days 27 to 29, Crumb and I managed to slip through a crack into the restaurant. It was after hours, but a worker was still there preparing food. Ho, ho, ho. I'm going to make my best burger yet! Mm, burgers! Hey, hey! Focus! Do not go after that burger! We made a break for a door that led to the basement, but it was locked. Great! Suddenly, the chef stormed by us on his way to gather ingredients. Whoa! Okay, my best guess is that chef has a key. We have to make sure that we stay quiet so that we can steal it from him. So what we're gonna do is... Wait, 
crumb? I looked, and he was on the burger. What are you doing? This burger is amazing. Holy guacamole. An ant on my gourmet dish? I kill it. I kill it now. Oh, come on. The chef ran to the pantry and grabbed a potato launcher. He began firing potatoes all over the kitchen, trying to smush crumb. Hey, I flew in using my flames to fend him off. Ah! It's an insect revolution! Protect the gourmet dishes! Gourmet? It's fast food, dude! Ah, what was that? In his anger, he shot out a potato that bounced off the wall and hit him in the head knocking himself out. I flew over and grabbed the key from him. Really? You just had to have a burger, huh? Oh, uh, sorry. On days 30 to 32, we made our way successfully into the basement, only to see that it was littered with expired food food. Yuck. One man's yuck is another man's buffet. Past all the junk, I saw the entrance to a strange stone temple. How did they not notice this? We walked up to the doors as they slowly creaked open and whispers filled the air. Creepy. Inside was a long, dark hallway, but at the end was a fiery light. The never-ending torch. You go ahead. Someone's got to take care of all this trash, you know. Okay, if I can just get there, I'll get stronger. On days 33 to 35, I stepped into the hallway, but because of this, it began to stretch before my very eyes. Suddenly, the doors slammed shut, and I looked to see that I was now in a crystalline maze. So it was a trap. I need to find that torch. I began to move through the maze and strange shadows filled within it. Huh? Then out of the walls dropped golems. They started launching shadowy figures out at me. Whoa, whoa. They kept appearing and looked like they were trying to drag me into the walls. Ah! I hurried through the maze in a panic until I ran into the center chamber. And there it was, the torch. Almost there. But as I made my way towards it, my path was blocked by hooded villagers. Those who do not have us in the shadows shall perish in darkness. I'm sorry, what the what? They wasted no time and began to attack me with their shadows. Ah! My attacks weren't working on them, but then it hit me. The darkness. I used my fire abilities, which lit up the room, causing them to back away from me. Fire and light is their weakness. With this in mind, I went up and ran for the torch. All right, now, don't grab that. I didn't listen, and when I grabbed it, I instantly upgraded. I gained five more hearts and two powerful fire fists. Whoa, this is sick. In my new form, I was able to shoot out fire from my fists which lit up the room so much that the shadows vanished. <laughs> Turning around, I saw that the hallway had returned to normal. Okay, time to get out of here. I started to head out of the underground basement with Crumb, but as I did, I saw a customer yelling for service. Hello? Is anyone here? Oh, a potato! This looks amazing! The customer ran over to grab it and ate it. Oh no, those are the ones he was shooting at us. Oh, 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 oh what? Huh? Oh no, he's back up. You there? Are you the chef? This potato here is amazing! I will come here for service every day for the rest of my life! <laughs> oh, uh, oh my! <laughs> Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> the chef then turned over and saw us. Oh, this is because of you crazy little bugs. Here, take this burger as an award. Yes. Yes! This is the best day of my life! On days 36 to 39, we made it safely back to base, where I saw all the fireflies did too. I helped them settle in by building cozy, tree-lit homes for them. Once I finished, I was able to place the gourmet burger from the fast food place in front of Crumb's Anthill. I'll never be hungry again! I... 
think you will. Oh, there you are. Come with me. We've got something for you. Okay. I followed him. And so they're now fully functioning honey lab. Whoa, you built all of this? You sound surprised? Come on, we're worker bees, you know? We're science- uh, Anyway, look, this is what I found. He tossed me over a GPS tracker? Yeah, we've been looking for anything that gives off that same level of heat as the other eternal flames. There's a lot of activity coming from the area tracked on that thing. Another flame could be there. Say less. I flew out towards the area, but when I reached the clearing, I saw that it was a field set on fire. Not only that, but poisonous goop from the frogs was everywhere. Oh no, it's a trap. Before I could react though, Ranid and his swamp frogs leapt out of the trees and I was completely surrounded. Are you that little foil flaw that freed my snacks? Those snacks are my people. All of the insects you're eating, you're ruining the swamp because of it. One of the frogs was about to shoot out its tongue, but- Stop, he's mine. I used the opening to fly up and try to get away, but Ranid jumped up and knocked me back down. Ah! <laughs> I admire your bravery. All the rest of your kind are scared little cowards who deserve to be eaten. And with you gone, that is all they will ever be. He lunged to eat me, and I barely dodged out of the way and tried my new fire fist attack. But he just laughed it off. <laughs> oh, was that supposed to hurt? He knocked me back again, and I was now extremely weak. Don't worry, I'll make all your friends get quick ones. Ranid then shot out his tongue, swallowing me whole. On days 45 to 47, I woke up in a gross area. Ah, my head. I looked around at my new surroundings and realized I was inside Ranid's stomach. Oh no, that's it. I'm gonna die here. Ahead of me was a green glow coming from another chamber. Gross. Is that stomach acid? Why, yes, it is. What the? Wait, a group of half decayed insects? Ah, you guys are alive, but you're gross. Don't worry. In time, you'll be just like us. All the bugs who get eaten eventually do. They led me to their small camp, where there were even more of them. Hey, I'm flying here! What? I'm all the way down here! You guys all live here? So what? You just gave up? We've searched for an exit, buddy, but every path is blocked by acid. We've been trying everything, there's no use. No, no, there has to be a way out. Out of frustration, I unleashed a fire punch that struck one of the stomach walls. Because of this, the whole stomach shook and the pools of stomach acid began bubbling. That's it, I have an idea. On days 48 to 52, all of the bugs began tossing their things into the stomach acid. Wait, what are you guys doing? Look, if you could use my fire to create a big boom, we could possibly force that frog to throw us up. That is gross, but worth a try. What about all of you and your stuff? We're weak and only getting weaker. We don't have much time left. This frog has taken our lives, our freedom. Please, just promise you'll do what's right and stop him, no matter what happens to the rest of us. I, I promise. Hey, you're the Firefly, right? The one looking for the eternal flames? Wait, how did you know? I just got eaten recently. Everyone out there has heard of what you're doing. The blazing flashlight is one of the flames. It was in my home, a dumpster in the city. You gotta find it, please, mister. Yeah, thank you, I will, and thanks to each and every one of you. Farewell, Fozo. There in the acid was the pile of their things. Here goes nothing. I struck the pile and the acid, causing the stomach to shake violently. Okay, here goes nothing. Whoa! 
Looking around, I saw I was high above a busy city. Humans were walking around everywhere, not paying attention at all. This must be the place the snail was talking about. Okay, I still gotta be careful. I journeyed through the streets until I finally found an alleyway with a dumpster. Jackpot! Once I flew inside, I was greeted by the view and smell of a world of trash. Yuck! I gotta stop going into places that smell this bad. As I landed, I heard voices coming from nearby. Huh? What was that? Oh no, I gotta hide. What? I swore I heard someone coming onto our turf. You gotta get your ears checked, man. Eh, come on, hurry up. We're gonna miss dinner. The rats ran off. Wait, mobster rats? This just keeps getting weirder and weirder. I began to search around the dumpster and it didn't take long for me to find the blazing flashlight. Yes, I rushed to grab it, but nothing happened. It's out of batteries? Seriously? Hey, buddy! Um, oh no. <laughs> Hi. On days 57 to 59, I was brought before the rat mob boss. You come here on the day of our great cheese feast. Look, I I'm sorry. I don't mean to intrude. I just need- Oh, be quiet. Get this loser out of my sight. Hey, ah! Now. Someone cut the cheese. Cheese? I looked over to see they had revealed a large blender full of cheese and the batteries. They're in there. I used my fire fists to break out and dash towards the blender. What in the world? Somebody get him. One of the rats jumped in the way. So I shot a fireball at him. But it missed and hit directly at the blender. Oh no, the machine, it's malfunctioning. All of the cheese began to shower the entire dumpster. Whoa, I'm in heaven. Uh, this cheese stuff is wonderful. Oh. I love some dairy. Is that cheddar? Sweet, sweet mozzarella. Hey, <laughs> this cheese is pretty good. <laughs> Bada bing. <laughs> and the rats began to eat all of it. You know what, Pat? Well, I underestimated you. Hey, Georgie, get this guy his batteries or whatever he needs. The rat ran up and handed me a pair of batteries. Oh, cool, thanks. I put them into the flashlight, which turned it on and caused me to upgrade. I gained five more hearts and can now unleash a blinding tail light attack. Sick. On day 60 to 63, I was about to enter back into my base when I found my king by himself. I've been meaning to talk to you. Talk to me? Look, I didn't mean for all of our people to be found, okay? I just- Stop. It's not your fault, it's mine. Long ago, these swamps were nothing but pure beauty. Us fireflies, we were the ones that kept it safe with our light. But then, those frogs came and showed us who was really in control. As king, I should have stood against them, but instead, I forced us all to dim our light and hide. But now you've shown me we still have a chance. I'm proud of you, and I want to help however I can. Wow. Uh, thank you. Our moment was interrupted by one of the decayed bugs. Hey, you made it out. No, no, no. I saw you in that frog's belly. I overheard you talking about the eternal flames, right? Oh, yeah. You know about them too? Yeah, I was one of the lucky insects that did. And I'll do anything to get back at that toad. He has got to go. My other dragonfly people will look after the last one you need. Awesome. Wait, you think they'd be willing to help us? You do know dragonflies eat insects like me, right? Yeah, come on. They wouldn't hurt a fly. Oh, no. On days 64 to 68, the decayed dragonfly brought me to his people's territory by a grand waterfall at the edge of the swamp. So, you said I'll be safe here, right? As I said this, a massive dragonfly burst through the trees, heading right towards me. Ah! Come here. I haven't eaten in days. You said they wouldn't hurt a fly. I flew through the area, trying to get him off my tail, but it wasn't working. So I blinded him with my new tail light attack. Ugh. Hey, stop it. He's cool, man. Yeah, yeah, please. 
listen to your friend. The dragonfly reluctantly listened as we flew to the top of their terrain, where I saw just how beautiful their part of the forest was. The frogs haven't even touched this place. Yes, and it's going to stay that way. Let them destroy everything else for all I care. Wait, what? Are you guys just gonna watch as the frogs take over? It's all of our home. Let's stay focused. We're here for the eternal flame. <sighs> right this way. They took me through the waterfall and into a cavern where there was a lava fall flowing into a lake. At its center floated the ignited lily pad. Yes, I flew towards it, but the dragonfly cut me off. Hold on there, hotshot. You want that thing? First, you gotta do something for us. On day 69 to 73, the dragonfly leader and I were looking down over a human carnival? These humans are even more vile than the frogs. They moved in recently and began to expand their freak show onto our turf, destroying it all. If you really want the ignited lily pad, go there and make them lead. You want me, a bug, to convince a ton of humans who can't understand me to make them leave. Okay, yep, copy that. I slowly made my way into the carnival, as there were humans of all sizes having the time of their lives. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> hey, this isn't so bad. But as I looked around even more, I watched as a kid started to hit a pig in its pen. <laughs> it's so bad. Who wants bacon wrapped corn dogs? Yes! Me, 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 me. Oh my goodness, they're hurting the animals. I gotta take this place down. While everyone was running to the corn dog stand, I noticed a well-dressed man walking into the huge central tent. He must be the one running this entire place. A corn dog for you, a corn dog for everyone. On day 74 to 77, I flew into the central tent, approaching the ringmaster. Hey, uh, sir? It seems your circus is... Oh, no! A bug in my circus? Ah! He blasted me with a cloud of disgusting vapor. Ooh! Good thing I always keep my insect repellent on me. <laughs> now to smush you before any of those customers see. Time to go. I tried to fly away, but I was so dizzy from the vapor. I could barely fly straight. Whoa, whoa! I accidentally ran into a pile of flammable materials, causing them to burst into flames. What? What? What's happening? My fire burned up the ropes of the tent, rapidly spreading flames across the entire thing. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, the humanity! The entire place is burning to the ground! Hey, I haven't finished my corn dog yet. Hello, is this thing on? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, please remain calm. Remain? Uh, oh, who am I kidding? Fire! Everyone run! All the humans fled the circus ground as the tent burned. Hey, you did it! You actually did it! Yeah, totally meant to do that. <laughs> we then heard ruffling off to the side, only to see the dragonfly leader was eating a ton of the carnival's cotton candy. This human food is delicious. We have enough here to feed us for the rest of our lives. I'm never going back to eating insects. On day 78 to 84, I was heading back to the waterfall with the dragonflies when poisonous rain began to pour over the area. Oh no. Suddenly, in a huge burst of goo, the swamp frogs leapt in, attacking and devouring dragonflies. <laughs> with you dragonflies out of the way, all of this swamp will be more eating grounds. Chaos from the battle was all around me as one of the frogs leapt in to attack. Yeah! But then Ranid spotted me. You? You're still alive? How? Oh, what? Are you not impressed anymore? Do you realize it was all your fault that we found you fireflies? And they were a nice meal. Ah! 
He lunged at me as we began to fight. I tried to blind and burn him with my abilities, but he pushed through every attack until slamming into me, sending me through the waterfall. Ah, ah. Wait, the ignited lily pad. I really will enjoy eating you. <laughs> Again. Suddenly, the decayed dragonfly swooped in, hitting him back. Hey, you ugly lug! I got a bone to pick with you! Now's my chance! On days 85 to 90, while the dragonfly distracted Ranid, I seized the opportunity to grab the ignited lily pad. Its fire surged within me as I upgraded. I gained 10 more hearts and became much more powerful. But as I turned around, Ranid hit the dragonfly against the cave walls, killing him. No! The impact was so strong, causing the waterfall to cave in with me inside. Ah! As the dusk cleared, the only way out was up. So I flew up into the toxic rain. Ah! It burns! I saw that the swamp frogs were gone, and there were almost no dragonflies left. What happened in there? Where's the other dragonfly? I'm sorry. He didn't make it. Look, these frogs, they don't even realize how much of the swamp they're ruining. It's wrong, and I need all the help I can get. We're done for. No home, barely any people. No, I have an idea. You guys should come with me. On days 91 to 94, I brought the dragonflies to my home and gathered everyone around. Ranid and the swamp frogs, they've done enough. None of us can stand it anymore, and I'm going to face them. All the fireflies then look to our king. For too long, I have snuffed out the flame of the fireflies. And now, it is you, Fozo, who will lead us into a life of light. We are with you. Suddenly, all of the fireflies' lights burned bright as the whole base was lit up. I felt a wave of heat like I never had before as my flame burned the brightest. Let's go burn some frogs. Because of this, I felt so much stronger. This entire time, you wanted to stop the frogs. To prove to us we shouldn't live in fear. You shouldn't fight alone. It's time we fight for our people and take them down together. I'm glad I have you guys to back me up. On days 95 to 99, the army of fireflies and I landed in a clearing of the wart-infested swamp. There, across from us, was Ranid and his frogs. This is it. We're not afraid anymore. So be it, man. Frogs, devour them. We all flew in to attack. The fireflies launched volleys of, of fireballs towards the frogs, and it was working. Our flames burned so bright that we actually stood a chance. The frogs were ruthless, though, and kept fighting. So I flew down and took out a wave of them with my abilities. Whoa! A tongue flew out, but my king jumped in the way, and thankfully, the frog couldn't eat him because... <laughs> Our flames, they're too hot for them. The frog was then taken down by Crumb's bite. I got him. Whoa, dude, you could do that? Go, Fozo. We can take these guys on, but him, he's all yours. On day 100, I faced Ranit at the center of the murky swamp. So, the little firefly really thinks he can defeat me? <laughs> this swamp belongs to me! You all are nothing but food! A meal! And when I'm finished with you, all of your friends will be eaten too! No, they won't! I'm not afraid of you anymore, Ranid! None of us are! And this ends now! Because of my anger, I felt the fire I gathered along my journey fuel within me. Ranid launched his massive tongue at me as the fight began, and I dodged around the air, hitting him with everything I could. You'll need more than that to beat me. He leapt up and slammed into me, sending me to the ground. Ah! Ow! As I said from the very beginning, you insect. 
You and your tiny little friends never stood a chance. Ranid was about to eat me whole. But I unleashed my fire fists and was actually able to push him back now. Each strike weakened him further and further. This is for all of the innocent creatures you've eaten. This swamp is our home. I then summoned the strength of my new ability, a beam of firelight, which shot down right onto Ranid. No, this can't be. The beam caught up to him and engulfed him in flames, ending him for good. With that, the swamps were freed and all of us innocent creatures could now finally live in peace.